Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we have the brand new Tier 10 Polish Destroyer, the Gdansk Import, to review for you guys today. With the release of the Pan Euro DD line, well, the second Pan Euro DD line, we have the Gdansk available to research. The ship is, of course, free to research for everyone right now as it is a tech line ship. So as always, big shout out to the channel's Patreons for helping make this ship review and all ship reviews possible. Supporting the channel and Patreons the best place to do so, besides of course just watching the streams and the videos. I'm not a CC nor supported by or affiliated with Wargaming in, in any way, shape, or form. So, so I do not get these ships free to review. But again, the donations from the channel's Patreons help make this ship review and all ships review possible. So big shout out to those guys. A big thank you to those guys whose names should have popped up on screen here a second or two ago. So the Gdansk. This is an interesting ship. I didn't really get any of the Pan Euro DDs to try during the early access period. I've heard they're quite busted. We, we ran into a few of them in clan battles and the like. They seem to be a weird mix of the run and gun DDs, but they also have smoke and radar. So I'm very interested to see what the ship is like. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at the ship, go over her stats and her features and such. And then we'll go into the gameplay review section where I will give you guys a score for the Gdansk. Art department is always doing a pretty good job, although there is one aspect where they did let this ship down. And, um, well if you will. So this is the, you know, the, the, sh the ship is naked, all right? For your 500 dubs, this is your perma camo. Slight off gray blue. <laughs> it's just like the, um, the Andalusia yesterday. Or apparently you say the Andalusia. But anyway, uh, you literally go from dark gray, light gray, dark gray, Light gray, dark gray, light gray, dark gray, light gray, and it doesn't even remove the rust. Like, come on! If I'm paying for a, a premium camo that's just slightly darkening the ship's hull, at least remove the rust. And this isn't a, a pre-war design. This is a design. Whoops! Didn't mean to whip the camera around like that. Uh, the ship was designed in 1939, according to uh, War Gaming. So, like, I get like post-war radar had, you know, radar technology had. Um, improved dramatically throughout the war. And post-war, you know, dazzle camouflage wasn't really needed anymore. But this is a pre-war ship, or a very early war ship, so, you know, it was, it's hard to make something like that for it, you know? You know? Like, you know, the, the camels the art department makes, the historical camels, are neat. Uh, I mean, like, something like, just, just like this, look how cool that looks. Just, you know, make this a permanent camo or something. But yeah, you know, Wargaming is going to do what Wargaming is going to do. We we'll probably will we'll run that camo on it when, when we get to running it in game. But yeah, it... second ship in a row, you've let me down with the camo art department. But the modeling guys are doing their, the, you know, they're doing the Lord's work. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this ship. So uh, economically, this is a tech line ship. Um, I somehow had the permanent bonus for it. I don't know how I got this. Uh, it's... So, okay, but this, of course, doesn't come with it. If you want to buy the perma bonus, it is a 50% buff to the credits and 100% to your various XPs. And then I will probably be running the, uh, yeah, the green boosters on this during my playtime on it. I do this because, of course, like, to get the ship, I burned a lot of my free XP, as you can see right here, <laughs> to get the ship. So, yeah, that's why I run all those bonuses on it, because I have all these ships I'm reviewing and commanders I'm training up for these ships. Uh, tier 10 DD armor, no surprises, 19 kilometers, 19 kilometers, that'd be some thick armor, 19 millimeters everywhere. Of course, no citadel is a DD. Uh, 24,400 hit points. Her guns, you get a single mounted 139, and then three dual mounted 139s for a grand total of seven guns. Uh, a literal odd number there, odd number of guns on the ship. Uh, base reload time of 3.7 seconds. They have a 180 degree turn time of 18 seconds, 105 millimeters uh, maximum dispersion, uh, 12 kilometer maximum range base. They only have HE, 
and they each does a max damage of 2,000, 10% fire chance, 200 millimeters a pin, and those come out the tubes at 840 meters a second. I forgot that these things only had HE. That is weird. All right. And again, main battery firing to 12 kilometers. Again, these are primarily anti DDDs from what we've been told. Uh, you get 10 torps, 2x5, 533s. They have a 180 degree turn time of 7.2 seconds, 106 seconds reload time, so you could probably be able to get that under 100 seconds with a build. 10 kilometer range, 11,200 maximum damage, 86 knots torpedo speed, and a detectability of 1.6 kilometers. So they do seem to have the uh, Pan Euro torpedoes, you know, the fast boys with the light damage. So that's, those are pretty useful as we've seen on the Jaeger. Uh, depth charges, you get deck mounted depth charges. Uh, Two charges, 12 bombs to charge, 2400 maximum damage, and a 40 second reload time. A defense, she has 2x4 of the 25mm guns, 5x4 of the 57mm guns, uh, continuous damage is 267, and the second reinforcement is 35%. How many flak bursts do we get? Does it say? Does it say? Does it say? Does it say? Let's continue this damage. Or is there no flak? Oh, there might not be any flak. So that's, uh, hmm, okay. Because flak really does a lot of the damage when you are flying through. Let me just check. Cause I haven't, I normally don't go deep into the AA, but, um, but with the Pan Euro boys, oh, yeah, see, damage of my shell, shell, shell explosions, yeah. But with the Pan Euro boys, they're known for having good AA, so I'll see if that, uh, was going to cut, carry over to the good dance. Let me check the. Yeah, so she, again, there's flak here. So, she doesn't have any flak guns. So that's, uh, hmm, alright. A rating of 60. We'll see how that works. May not be that great. Maneuverability, max speed, 41.2 knots. Again, before you throw anything onto it. Turning circle radius of 810 meters. And a rudder shift time of 5.3 seconds. Kasuba is 9.1 kilometers base. Alright, so let's go look at her box of gimmicks. So, again, radar as well. So she does get a radar, but this is an extremely short radar. 10 seconds. It's really more for personal use. Keep in mind that there's a 6 second spotting delay from you lining someone up with radar to your teammate seeing them. So when you pop this radar in the Gdansk, you have exactly 4 seconds if you're an allied ship to shoot at it. Again, more of a personal use radar. She does get engine boost. You get an 8% boost for 90 seconds, and it reloads in 90 seconds. And then you have Smoke Generator, which is, which is active for 97 seconds. So this is weird, because again, these ships are fast. They have the guns you would expect for a running gun DD to have. But then you get Smoke and Radar. Again, something implying you're supposed to go to a cap, smoke up, radar the enemy DDs, and murder them. So, running gun ships, you typically avoid the caps like the Plague, because you typically, even though you're fast, you know... You're kind of unwieldy. You have a large turning circle or something like that. And you're a pretty big target in and of, your, in and of yourself when talking about the DD world. So, interesting, interesting setup that we got here. Yeah. Alright, is there anything else I need to go over? I think that is it. So, we're going to go ahead and slap a commander and module build on this thing. I'll meet you guys right back here. Alrighty, so let's start with the modules. So, I went with main armaments mod 1. This reduces the chance the main battery guns become incapacitated by 20%. Also boosts their survivability by 50% and reduces their repair time by 20%. Same thing to the torps. We then went with engine room protection upgrade. This gives us a 20% buff to the chance of the, of the engine becoming incapacitated and a 20% buff to the repair time. Same thing to the steering gears. I then went with aiming systems mod 1. This gives us a 7% buff to the main battery dispersion. Also increases the torpedo tube's reverse speed and, well, the secondary battery firing range, but there is none on this ship, although it would be pretty funny if it did. And then we went with Propulsion Mod 1, which reduces the time it takes us to get up to top speed by 50%. I then went with Concealment Systems Mod 1, which gives a 10% buff to our detection. And then finally for the modules, Main Battery Mod 3, to give us a 12% buff to the reload time of the guns. For the Commander, I do have Swirsky on board. And what we did was, I went with preventative maintenance, so that gives us a 30% buff to the chance of the modules becoming incapacitated. Last stand, of course, so if something does get knocked out, will be good. It'll, it will continue to work at a reduced um, rate, and this is, of course, applying to the engine and the steering gears. 
I then went with survivability expert to give us an, an additional 350 HP per tier and adrenaline rush, which gives us Swirsky's improved adrenaline rush of 0.25% of an increase to our main battery and torpedo tube below time for every 1% of HP lost. I then went with, um, Come on, game. Main battery and AA specialist. Uh, these used to be BFT and AFT, and I got used to saying it for years, but of course they changed it with the commander rework, which gives an additional 5% boost to our main battery reload time. And then I went with main battery and AA expert, which gives us an additional 20% boost to our, the main battery range. So that helps with that 12 kilometer range. I then went with fearless brawler. So the reason I didn't go with the second consumer experts buff is that this is going to be a gunboat. And as long as we have, like, around an 8-kilometer detection range with the speed of the ship, we can run away from cruisers and destroyers, aside from cruisers and battleships. Against other DDs, the idea is that, oh, I hope I have one more skill I can, uh, boom, there you go, turret rotation for the quick turrets. Um, anyway, I forgot about that one. But anyway, um, other DDs, I believe we can just outright outgun them in most cases, unless it's like the French DDs. So that's what we're going for here. So that's why I took Fearless Brawler. So when we do get spotted, we get another 10% boost to the reload time of the guns. So what did this do to the ship? I'm so glad you asked. So now our survivability, we have 27,900 HP, which is a lot of HP for a destroyer to have. The guns have a 3.1 second reload time. And keep in mind, when we get spotted, that's going to drop that down by another 10%. So we're going to have something like, I think, a 2.8 second reload time on these guns. And our firing range is out to 14.4 kilometers now, which is a lot more comfortable for when we have to, like, you know, farm out battleships or heavy cruisers and the like. Um, torpedoes, I don't think I did anything with them. Uh, AA, it's at 63 now. Don't think really too much of that. Speed with the speed flag is 43.3 knots. Again, you have an engine boost to make you go even faster. And then the concealment is at 8.2 kilometers. So some of this is most definitely manageable with the speed of the ship. All right. We're going to give the ship a quick facelift. Bones, see, was that so hard? We're giving our department. And we're going to go ahead and take her into battle now. I'll meet you guys there with a voiceover review of the Gdansk. Hey guys, voiceover Sea Lord here, and oh my lord, I just got through probably the worst two and a half hours that I've ever had in this game in a minute, including the two hour slog fest I had with the Georgia a few weeks ago. So, what happened here is that for the last two hours and change, I had some of the worst teams I've ever had in this game, and the enemy team. I don't know what I've done to offend them. Maybe they don't like they, they they didn't like the cruiser list video, but good lord, they were going after me like I murdered their grandma, like <laughs> so many times throughout this session. I was of course doing DD things, and the friendly ships were behind me like there were cruisers and battleships near me but the enemy cruisers and dds and such would pop up and they would of course start targeting me all of them would not the dds or, or i'm sorry not not the cruisers or the battleships behind me me understandable i'm in the dd what does the friendly team do not even shoot at them i had i think i can count on one hand how many cruisers actually were trying to help me out and i do appreciate those guys but no you know the the, the teammates that are five kilometers behind you aren't paying attention and aren't shooting at the cruisers that are you know, 13 kilometers in front of you trying to murder you they're shooting at the battleships and the cruisers that are 18 kilometers away on the other side of the map because of course why would they actually want to help your uh your dd out uh, so PSA, fellas, help your DDs out. Shoot the cruisers that are trying to murder your DDs. Be a good teammate, for the love of God, please. And I went through two hours of this, all right? I had one or two teams that actually tried to do something. Um, and those are typically the matches that we won in like seven minutes, unfortunately. So I had a rough go in this ship. The ship's been through the ringer. I have a very 
very solid um, experience with this. Well, not solid experience. I, 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 I'm pretty familiar with, 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 with the good dance by now is what I'm trying to say. But yeah. Anyway, the background footage, this is one of the better matches that I had. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a super high damage round or anything. I don't, I don't think I even broke 100,000 damage. I think I got pretty close, though. But it's just, I had an incredibly rough session with the Gdansk. So, ship's been through it. Let's talk about the ship now. And I'm not going to be taking points off, just because, yeah, no, I didn't get a 160, 170,000 damage game in the Gdansk. No, that's not that big of a deal for me. We got a pretty solid feeling of how the ship performs overall. So let's talk about that. So, it is a weird combination of destroyer traits. What you have here is a French destroyer hull. I think it's actually the Mogador hull. With Soviet AA guns. And then they slap a smoke and radar onto it. So, French destroyers. I like French destroyers. The Cobert is one of my favorite ships in the game. And it is a line that you are meant to play basically full W running around the edges of the map and gunning things down. The Gdansk, again just looking at the hull you might think oh it's more of that. But then you look at the smoke and the radar consumable and it's like huh? Do you, you want me to go to the cap, smoke up and radar the other DDs that try to enter the cap while you're smoked up? Um, because that sure is what looks like you're implying here. So that's weird. And for the first couple of games, I tried to play it like that. I went to the cap, I would smoke up, and then I would radar the DDs that would try to get into the cap with me. And that kind of worked until Johnny Radar Cruiser was also at the cap. Then I'm radared, and then I'm in a French DD hole. And I'm being radared from close range. From what I said in the port sec section, uh, run and gun DDs don't typically go near the caps because it's death for them. Why? Run and gun DDs like the Kleber, the Kabarovsk, you know, the other French DDs and such, they might be fast, but they aren't nimble. They are big DDs. If you look at the, I mean, yeah, look, look at the, the Gdansk, it's a big DD, it's long. You need, you know, long, thin things, long, thin shapes in the water to go fast. Which means you have a large turning circle radius, which means you're not as nimble as, like, the Fletchers. Like, Black, another smoke radar DD. She's very nimble. She can, you know, wiggle around just fine around islands that are in the caps. And, of course, maneuvering in, D in uh, cap circles is very important for those DDs. Can't really do that in a French DD hull. So, now you're radared by Johnny and Radar Cruiser, who's 10 kilometers away from you, and sure, you're fast. You are very fast with your speed boost going, but they're still going to get a salvo or two into you. And the French DDs, when you do get hit, they have the improved French DD damage saturation. It's a mechanic to where essentially the French DDs get damage saturated much faster than the other ships in the game, so effectively they're more tanky. The dance doesn't get that. So those one or two salvos they do get into you are going to hurt. And again, from my play experience, I was being targeted by like three or four cruisers at once because why not? So, yeah, it wasn't uncommon that I'd lose like half my health trying to do that. So I'm like, okay, well, this isn't working. I, I, I got I to gotta flip it up. So I swapped to playing it more like the Kleber, where you stay at range, run and gun. And even though I was at like 13... 14 kilometers, very edge of my gun range, trying to dock it down, you know, cruisers and battleships and such. Of course, everyone drops what they're doing. They're going to target me instead of the cruisers or, you know, battleships that are a kilometer or two behind me because it's the new ship and there's a YouTuber in it, so we got to murder it. So, yeah, I, I think I was constantly in like two and three million potential damage games in this ship. So that, that was fun and engaging, shall we say. But anyway... So, like, it, it works like that. It works pretty well like that. And the guns are really good. The guns are very good. Very comfortable. Nice HE Alpha. And a great reload time, especially if you have Swirsky. Especially if you were me and you had Swirsky. Because I was getting down to, like, a 2.2 second reload because of all the, uh, you know, half the enemy teams just focusing on, on 
on my Polish boat, you know? So, yeah, no, the guns are great. It's just that the games wouldn't last long enough for me to do anything in them. Uh, because, of course, when your team isn't supporting your DDs, because it's not just me they weren't supporting, it's the other DDs they weren't supporting, uh, yeah, your, your, your team's not going to win. You know, there's a little secret there for you. So most of the games I had were, like, seven-minute games. Yeah, I played for two hours, but I, I play, like, I think my replay file folder is full of Gdansk replays right now because of how fast the games were. So despite only doing, like, 40,000, 50,000 damage for a lot of those games, a lot of that were two enemy DDs because I would target them first because someone's going to kill the DDs and why not the boat that's good at killing DDs? Because it is good at killing DDs with the alpha and the guns and the reload time. So, yeah, no, I, I was doing okay in terms of where I was coming out on the leaderboard. Um... You know, I think it was top five most of the time. I think the, the one you see in the background, it's just a longer match, but I think I came middle of the scoreboard because I was just farming uh, battleships and cruisers most of the time. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, um, like, the ship performed well when I was doing that, but then it's like, well, what's with the smoke and radar combo then? So what I was trying to do what was working fairly well to me uh, for me is that for the first, like, half of the match, I would play it like a Kleber. You know, stay at the longer end of your range, 13, 14 kilometers, and try to murder things with your guns. You know, uh, throw HE... Well, you can you kill only throw HE. Like, throw HE in the face of cruisers and battleships and murder the DDs when they pop up. And then for the second half of the game, then go in and try to cap when the, D when the cruisers are a little bit more dispersed. Hopefully the radar cruisers are dead. And then use your smoke and radar to you go on the caps, take them, if a DD comes into it, radar them, and murder them. Another good thing about the Gdansk is that with the concealment module, your detection range is below your radar range. So if you're detected, just, just pop radar, and then boop, there's the DD that's spotting you. You may now murder him. And that worked pretty well in the Gdansk. So, yeah. I mean, that's what I was doing. It was working fairly well again just the matches and the teams i had were bleh, for most of the most of the evening the i think the team i had right now they they did a lot better job than the other teams that i had so uh, by the team i have now i mean the team in the background footage so other parts of the ship torpedoes pan euro torpedoes have a long reload time i wouldn't really build into them it's a gunboat you have some very nice guns here i wouldn't worry about building into them uh, but, I mean, yeah, they're, they're fast, they're easy to get on target. Uh, if the enemy ship is definitely not paying attention, I mean, shoot, they're running at 86 knots. So, they're going to get there pretty quick, but they're low damage. If you're familiar with the pan Euro Torps, more of the same here. They're pretty solid torpedoes. Uh, nice to use when you're either kiting or, again, you still have an 8.2 km detection range. So, you can get within 9 kilometers of the enemy ship and drop these torpedoes from that close. And... Unless they have Hydra or something, they're probably going to eat them. So, pretty good torpedoes there, in my opinion. AA is... it's... no. <laughs> Don't have any flak. It's all close-range AA. So, AA range is 4.2 kilometers, by the way. Yeah. You definitely traded some AA here to get these nice guns. So, not an AA boat like the main pan Euro line. Other than that, I mean, ship's pretty solid all around. It's, it does feel pretty well balanced, because despite having amazing gun power, y your turret angles are... They make the Germans blush. You cannot shoot behind you with the front turrets unless you're showing, I think, pretty much your flat broadside. I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's a DD, right? But when you're retreating, you don't want to have to show your entire side to the enemy team. You want to pre present the smallest profile as possible. So when you are having to run away, you only have three guns because your number four turret's a single gun. So that is a little infuriating. Meanwhile, with, like, again, the Cabros and the Kleber and the other running gun DDs, they have much more comfortable angles uh, to where you can get a bit better of a profile being shown. But with the Gadats, you got to show them the whole friggin' ship to get your guns. And that goes for the for forward and back angles as well they're atrocious so but with the gun power that you have that's completely understandable you don't want to be able to you know have a tiny profile and have these crazy guns going off like um you would like to because that would not be balanced at all so yeah it, it's, it's a really solidly balanced ship uh the radar and smoke combo i know there was a lot of freak out about that when the ships were announced but again 
it's a 10 second radar six seconds for the ship to be spotted to the rest of the team so you have four seconds that your team can shoot at the other dds it's really good at scaring dds out of camps and it's good for you obviously you can get a few salvos into them in 10 seconds and keep in mind that's if you know exactly where they're at like if they smoke up in front of you and you go okay they're in that smoke you can get your turrets angled i'm sorry turrets turned toward where you think they're at and have them ready to go but if they're just in the cap and you don't know and you pop the radar you might think they're at your one o'clock but they're really at your five o'clock and you gotta wait for your turrets to turn which do take a couple of seconds and by that time oh you only got seven seconds left on your radar now so yeah it's it's not the game changing game breaking radar that it was made out to be it's again pretty well balanced in my opinion the gdansk overall i'd give it an eight out of ten really good ship if anything, a small heel, I think, would make this ship a little bit more comfortable to play because it lacks the French damage saturation and is a very big target. Although, that could just be being skewed by my experience of the day, which is I was having to deal with half the enemy team focusing on me and just me. But, yeah, really good DD overall. I would recommend going up the line, especially if you like the uh, run-and-gun playstyle. It's a very, very good ship for that. I just hope I have some better games in the future. So guys, it's my two cents on the Gdansk. Let me know what you guys think about the Gdansk in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday, wonderful rest of your weekend. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.